Welcome to the Armstrong Williams Show brought to you by Golden Crush Bakery, the fastest growing Caribbean owned franchise in the United States. Golden Crush is committed to the delivery of quality food and excellent customer service. Visit them today at goldencrushbakery.com. Hello, everyone, and welcome to a very special edition of our Armstrong Williams show. Thank you so much for joining us. You know, one of my favorite pastimes is reading books. Boy, people ask, when do you have time? Well, you have to make time, um, especially when you have a good book. There's nothing better, really nothing better when, than having a good book. You know, we often hear about war stories, and, you know, you always hear the pack read the packaging of these books it makes it seem as though it's something you sh- cannot ignore reading it would be a life altering moment uh if you were to sit down and take the time with these books but there's this book it's very interesting fire and forget it's about war stories and and the thing you take away from this book that is it's true as they say in the praise for the book that war stories are almost never about war unless they're told by someone who was never there. Um, Our guest today, Roy Scranton, an Iraq veteran, was an artilleryman in the Army. Um, His poetry, fiction, and essays have appeared in numerous publications. And Matt Gallagher, a former Navy captain who served 15 months in Iraq, is senior fellow at the nonprofit Iraq and Afghanistan Veterans of America and author of the war memoir, Kaboom!, Um, published in 2010 by the Capo Press. They join us today um, because they're co-authors of the book, Advanced Praise, I mean, Fire and Forget. Um, Thank you both for joining us, and thank you for writing the book. Thank you, Thanks for having having us on. So let me start with you, Matt. Explain to our audience why it is almost, war is almost never about war unless it's told by someone who's never been there. Right, yeah, Uh, you know, war, um, the, what people think about is the combat experience, uh, uh, you know, be it a, a roadside bomb attack or a firefight. Uh, you know, more often than not, those, those happen in, in, in the span of seconds or, 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 or minutes. Uh, it, it's really the after effects uh, uh, of that, that that resonate far longer. Um, and, uh, you know, people come home, and, you know, you think that uh, uh, the, the war is over and you can uh, just return uh, back to life uh, the same way it was, and 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 that's that's generally not the veteran experience, and and, and uh, why so many of the fifteen stories in Fire and Forget uh, deal with the after effects of of, of what's been seen over there. Uh, a, a great example is, is Andrew Slater's story, New Me, uh, which is uh, about a veteran who suffered a traumatic brain uh, brain injury in a roadside bomb attack in Iraq, and he's literally having to uh, piece together uh, his life memory by memory. Uh, back uh, back here in the states. You know, uh, Roy, I I, I um, read most of this book, um, and it's a it's it's fiction. But I, but I, I just I'm just wondering, is it really fiction? Did you want to just call it fiction? Because these stories seem so not only so real but so surreal, and it's just the kind of things that you cannot even make up. Well, I'm I'm really glad to hear you say that because you know. Uh, in in editing the collection and and in collecting the stories from our our many uh, authors, you know, authenticity and and that feeling of you know of descriptive reality, but also also emotional reality, was really important uh, to to what we wanted the book to look and feel like. Uh, the, the stories are definitely, no question, fiction. It's a collection of short stories. But they're grounded in the lived experience of everyone in the collection who knows military life intimately. Uh, and, uh, you know, 14 of our 15 writers are, are actual veterans who, who have been downrange themselves. Um, 
so yes, yes, they're fiction. So, man, you know, so let's take us take us to Afghanistan. Um, there seems to be there's just so much that we don't know about Afghanistan, and sometimes I, I read beyond what you're writing and what you're bringing to us, particularly what is left on the cutting table. So, what what is it? Why is it that the the media and, and sometimes the military cherry pick the stories they want to float out there? And it's almost like ninety nine point percent. You never realize what's really going on in the story. You don't know the truth. It's like um, somebody doing the biography on a president. You really don't know much about the president until twenty years after they deceased. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. No. It's uh, it's, it's been a struggle uh, in both of these wars. Right. Uh, Iraq before uh, America withdrew at the end of two thousand eleven, and, and, and still with Afghanistan, which is so strange considering how long these wars have been been going on. There's just kind of this lack of connection uh, with the American public uh, uh, with with these wars. And, you know, I think there's a, a bunch of factors there. I, you, know, you touched on um, uh, uh, propensity for the media to often kind of cherry pick uh, stories. Um, you know, there's also kind of a lack of direct connection um, uh, because of it's an all volunteer force. You know, being fought by you know one half of one percent uh, of America's population. You know, first time in, in American history that a, that a protracted war uh, has been fought by the all volunteer force. Uh, so you know, certainly that's had kind of some unforeseen uh, societal consequences. Uh, and you know, that was w- one of the major reasons that, that I think we were inspired uh, to collect uh, these wide ranging stories. And, and um, just to give your listeners an idea of of, of uh, the kaleidoscope of the collection. Uh, on one end, uh, you know, you mentioned Afghanistan. One of our stories is, is called Raid by a former Army Ranger named Ted Janus, and it's just that. It's, it's about a, a midnight raid in the mountains of, of Afghanistan uh, uh, after bin Laden's been killed. Um, uh, so, you know, kind of a very different view uh, uh, from some of the other stories. On, on the opposite end, we have a story called uh, uh, Tips for a Smooth Transition by uh, Siobhan Fallon. Uh, 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 it's about a, a military, it's told from the perspective of a military spouse in Hawaii, uh, welcoming home her her returning husband, uh, and and having to try to return their life to normalcy and and, and the struggles struggles all that uh, all that will entail. Um, so you know we didn't want to just kind of focus on one type of uh, of story that came out of these wars because there there's so many. Uh, so we we wanted to get get 15 very different ones uh, that that told from different voices about uh, different stories about different characters to give readers kind of a, a full vibrant idea of what these wars uh, have meant to the people to the people that have fought them. You know, it's obvious that this book and your books and what you're doing is actually dedicated to all the men and women serving in the military as we speak. And, and But it's also, it brings awareness to the trials of war. And while you may say these are fictional stories, these are really stories from real military men and women serving in the war and and really on the cutting line. It's almost as if you were artists. You were doing it in paintings, and these paintings, you get a chance to just feel it. Um, it, it, Because, you know, the thing about war, um, war is vicious, it's ugly, it's it's fast-moving, it's gripping, and it's traumatic. I I mean, you see people die in some of the most horrific ways, um, it teaches you that you learn all your instincts and, and there's so many things that you can tell that you're grappling with in writing this book, especially, I don't know why I was so fascinated with the chapter about the train, but there was something about, and it was brief, but there was something about the trap though. Um, uh, but talk, talk to us about the train and exactly what, what was so penetrating about it? Um, um, the fear, what it represents, um, um, it, it just talk about it. Well, that's one of the the great examples uh, of of what fiction can do precisely, because Marriott Kalinowski's uh, story, The Train, uh, is able to take us inside of the head of a female marine mm. who has come back from downrange, and now she's she's back in New York and she's trying to move on with her life. But she's haunted by this event that happened at a guard post where she had to watch her friend uh, and a a fellow Marine 
get blown up by a suicide bomb attack, which she might have been able to have prevented. And she has to live with that memory, and it haunts her, and, and that, that the character, the narrator in, in Mariette's story, doesn't know how to grieve. She doesn't know how to let that go. She keeps riding the train back and forth between Long Island and Manhattan, all over, all over New York, because she just can't, can't face that moment again and, and can't move past but, it. But explain to our audience even in more detail how she could never let go, not only of the fear, but the fear as if it was just as present as it was the day of the, when she was in, a, in that chaotic situation. Right. That's, that's exactly it. So we, in the story, we go with her back into that memory that keeps coming back and back and back. It's a memory that, that haunts her, that she can't escape until she begins to make the decision to forgive herself and to, to maybe be able to move forward. So that's a great example of the way fiction can take readers inside the consciousness uh, of someone uh, inside the, the, the life and thoughts and memories of someone who's going through an experience that, would, that is, is tearing their life apart and would tear our lives apart if we had to go through it. But in fiction, you know, it's sort of a, it's a safe space where we can go there with that person and understand. Oh, wow. Um, we're going to take a break. We're going to come back to our very special guest, and they should be commended for this book, Fire and Forget. Roy Scranton and Matt Gallagher. I'm Armstrong Williams. We'll be back.